politics in what's shaping up to be a watershed election. It's ironic that perhaps the dominant figure on the campaign trail this year is not even running for office. At least not yet. Sarah Palin has endorsed 50 candidates in the midterms. If many of them win, it will add to Palin's reputation as a kingmaker and fuel speculation that she will pursue the biggest prize of all, the presidency. So will she run or won't she? My co-anchor Bill Weir has our report. It is election season in West Virginia. There's Ted Nugent with the anthem and a hopeful senator on stage. But there is no disputing the star attraction. Sarah Palin. A name that is nowhere on the ballot, but everywhere in this crowd. I'm pro-life and I think we should have our guns and I love my God. And I'm gonna vote with someone who agrees with that. I like the fact that she stands for God, country, patriotism, and keeping this country into capitalism, not socialism. Yes, this is the kind of adoration Sarah Palin has tasted from Nevada to Florida this fall. She's like me. She's a real person. She knows what the real world's like. Hey, thanks, guys. Bless you. While riding the Tea Party Express into uncharted political lands and electrifying conservatives unlike any breathing Republican. Though she hasn't been a candidate or held office in 16 months, her name recognition is higher than ever. She gets more magazine covers than anyone who refuses to do magazine interviews. And when was the last time you saw Tim Paul Lenny get a three-day pop on Entertainment Tonight? Right now, my Sarah Palin exclusive. Mary Hart has queried plenty of celebrities over the years, but few exchanges have rattled the corridors of power like this. Are you going to run for president? You know, I have not decided what I'm going to do in 2012. Uh, for me, Mary, it's, it's going to entail a discussion with my family, a real close look at the lay of the land, and to consider whether there are already candidates out there who can do the job. If there's nobody else to do it, then of course I would believe that we should do this. She was there to promote her new TLC series called Sarah Palin's Alaska. Let's get the fish before the bear gets the fish. But the ensuing buzz is all about the prospect of Sarah Palin's Washington, D.C. And over the weekend, she fueled it further while pushing back against a Karl Rove critique. Appearing on your own reality show on the Discovery Channel, I'm not certain how that fits into the American calculus of that helps me see you in the Oval Office, he told a British paper. There are high standards that the American people have for the presidency, and they require a certain level of gravitas. Those standards have to be high for someone who would ever want to run for president. Like, um, wasn't Ronald Reagan an actor? Wasn't he in bedtime for Bonzo, Bozo, something? Ronald Reagan was an actor. But Reagan was also governor of California for eight years. Ronald Reagan used to say status quo is Latin for the mess that we're in. Can a governor who quit office after two and a half years really reshape his party and her image? Well, the first indication will come tomorrow. 50 candidates around the country are running with a Palin endorsement. We need people like Sharon Engel and Joe Miller and Carly Fiorina and Christine O'Donnell and Dino Rossi and Marco Rubio and Rand Paul. And while she sprinkles in plugs for establishment Republicans, the the vast majority of Palin picks are Tea Party favorites. And the better they fare, the bigger the shockwave through the grand old party. But if this report is any indication, the rumblings have already begun. Washington's website of record Politico quotes more than 10 Republican power players voicing unanimous concern that a Palin nomination would guarantee Barack Obama's re-election. And this theme came up in virtually every single conversation, talking about concern that, like, one, that she will run and that she could win the nomination and how disastrous that would be for the party. And it is telling that all who spoke out against her did so anonymously. This is a joke to to have unnamed sources tearing somebody apart limb by limb. It, without a source. Without, without a source. source. Anyway, That's the point. If, may, I, if they would cite themselves, if they were, if they would man up, and if they would, <laughs> uh, you know, make these claims against me, then I can debate them. Palin emailed another retort today. Quote: I suppose I could play their game too by claiming these reporters and politicos are homophobe, child molesting, tax evading, puppy kicking, chain smoking, porn producers. But I'll only give you the information off the record. Unquote. 
Van der Heij stands by his sources and agrees they are justifiably scared witless of Sarah Palin. She's so popular with the Tea Party movement. The Tea Party movement is going to be instrumental uh, to Republicans' chances on Tuesday, and they don't want to face a backlash from her, the backlash from her followers. And her likely 2012 rival, Mitt Romney, explained the anonymous hand-wringing. There was a time when the elites in Washington thought they could uh, call the shots. Uh, what we found is that now that the party is overwhelmingly driven by the energy and passion of the grassroots, that the elites in Washington may be feeling uh, a little left out. Romney also said she would be good for the primary process, but maybe he's confident in the fact he's raised twice as much money as Palin in recent months while keeping his head down and towing the establishment line. And maybe he's encouraged by a recent ABC News Washington Post poll where more than two-thirds of voters said Sarah Palin is unqualified to be president. That's all voters. And when we ask people who call themselves Republicans, conservatives, and Tea Party members, even they split almost 50-50 on whether she's right for the job. So she has a lot of people to win over. Whether she can do it with a new book, TV show, and Twitter remains to be seen. There's something about this idea that she could at any moment decide she's running for president. And until she says yes or no, all of us have to assume that she's going to be part of the mix. And interesting that she fueled that speculation right before the midterm. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if that was, that was not timed. I mean, I, I, I give her, you know, for, for all those people who say she's not smart enough, she, you know, she doesn't know what she's doing, she is quite brilliant at um, getting herself positioned in this political environment, and you have to give her credit. Joe Miller, Sharon Angle, Christine O'Donnell, they could all fade away tomorrow. But the passion of Palin's base will likely remain. You're even going to look at a person. Oh, how oh, sweet, gonna... man. But how much new Republican love will come once she answers the question? Don't know yet what we're going to do. I'm Bill Weir for Nightline in New York.